After making a scuffed Minecraft clone on Unity years ago, I learned how to use C++ and remade Minecraft in that. However, that was one of the first times I'd ever used C++, so the code was awful. It eventually became pretty much unworkable, so I decided to start over while also making a game engine. However, I didn't have any experience making game engines either, so once again, the code was horrible. Through both of these projects, though, I became much better at using C++ and much better at programming generally. Because of this, I decided to rewrite both Willowbox Engine and Scuffed Minecraft from scratch, which is what I'll be starting in this video. Also, I recently hit 10,000 subscribers, so thank you all so much for that. If you enjoy this video, consider subscribing if you're not already. It helps me out a lot. Anyway, let's get into the video. I started by creating some basic features of the engine before working on the Minecraft clone. My vision for the engine this time around is to make it very modular. The core module contains the basic structure and some abstractions, but not much else. Then, things such as 3D rendering, 2D rendering, physics, and networking would be created as separate modules that could be included in the project. This way, builds are light and only contain what you need. The engine will improve over time as I need new features for my project so it'll get better with each video. I first created an application class to contain the basic program structure. I then made some basic rendering abstractions such as shaders, textures, vertex array objects, and cameras. I also made an input class, an event system, and an asset manager. My asset manager this time around is designed to work with any type of asset. If a module wants to create a new asset type, it just needs to create an asset loader for it that defines how it'll be created and it'll work right away. I'll talk more about these abstractions as we use them in Scuffed Minecraft. Speaking of which, it's time to start that project now. I started this project on stream to get the project in a functional state. Subscribe here or follow me on Twitch if you want to watch future streams. They're a lot of fun. Look at that, you get to see a little smiley face cube thing. I don't know what this is. But right now, of course, Scuffed Minecraft looks like this. We got like our FPS counter here and that's it, the blank screen. We we have nothing, so we're starting from square one, quite literally, because we got to build a square. We, of course, start with an array of vertices and an array of indices. After that, we can use the vertex array object abstraction that I made, which just handles the lifetimes of buffers and makes OpenGL calls for us. And then in here, we can just do mvao.draw, and that's about it. Now, it's probably not gonna work because I don't have any shaders yet. Well, it actually did work. Look at that, we get a black box. So it's just a little hard to see because it's a dark gray background. I created some very basic shaders, which can be loaded very easily easily just like this. Look at that. We get a blue square now. I then tried to add a texture. Oh, I forgot to actually add the attributes to this, huh? Perfect. All right, and then we just need to add this attribute. Okay, and now it's not working at all. <laughs> oh, because I set it to the same index. Duh. Oh boy. All right, I definitely messed this up. Hold on a second. <laughs> oh, I know why, because I set the stride wrong. There we go. After this, I added a camera with some basic camera controls. The camera class is the same as what I always make. It's pretty much just copy pasted from Learn OpenGL. With all of this done, it's time to make a cube. Now cubes are complicated because they have more faces than a square. I always like struggle to visualize the cube in my head. That should be good. Let's see if that works. Oh boy. Not quite. <laughs> so some of these faces are right. Two of them are, oh, all of these are reversed. Okay, only two of the faces are right. Wait, so what am I doing wrong? So like, if we look at a cube, right? This goes from, this needs to go boom, boom. One, two, three, four. South is this side, right? This is south and the north face is on the other side. So north or south is positive. So I think I reversed these. All right, so now I just, I mixed up east and west. 3D rendering stuff is weird because like east is positive and up is positive, but then north is negative. <laughs> and it's so annoying. All right, there we go. Now it's working. Got the north face. All of the smiley faces are upright. Perfect. So now that we have a cube, we need to make a chunk temporarily. This is just gonna be essentially just like a Boolean. All right, this is where we need to actually generate like the chunk. So first of all, we're gonna make a vector of a vertex. Vertices dot pushback nigga 0.5f. There we go. Okay, so that should create a north face. Oh, except for indices. 0, 2, 1, 1, 2, 3. And then we can do index count plus equal to 6. We'll just test it with just this face for right now. All right, let's try it. Let's see. Do we get a face? All right, well, it's not there. So <laughs> it, it is possible that I'm just facing away from it. What if I make the north face too? No. Okay, so it's definitely just not working at all. Wait, maybe I need to do junk vertex. Let's try that. Ooh. <laughs> okay, so we're getting things to render now, but it's not quite right. This is just four totally disconnected triangles right now. <laughs> That's what I remember Minecraft looking like. <laughs> Yeah, me too. Index count plus equal to four. Oh, wait. Oh, you're right. You're right. This is supposed to be vertex count, I guess, huh? Yeah. No, you're definitely... That's... Yeah, four vertices, not six. Six indices, but not elements. Yep, that's... Oh, okay. Well, I... 
apparently have other issues besides that, but yes. Never mind. I figured it out. There we go. Okay, that's better. Now we can make the rest of the cube. Alright, it's perfect. Alright, there we go. So now we have four cubes, but of course, it's generating all these extra faces, which is not great. Uh, then I guess this would just be not equal... Let me paste that in. Cool. And now we get to do this for every single face. There we go. It's working. So now we can see we have all the right faces and none of the wrong faces. Perfect. I then tested it with random blocks instead of a solid cube. All right. This should work now. Nope. Okay. Oh, I see what's happening. It's generating it even if it's... Even if it shouldn't. If we just need to skip it if it's not. There we go. Continue. Okay. Now we should be good. Look at that. All right. We got chunks. They're doing chunk things is beautiful. Look at that. We got big chunk. <laughs> That's a lot of smiley faces. That's mildly terrifying. Not gonna lie. <laughs> Maybe I should make them dirt blocks now. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, I don't know what happened. Oh, this is not right at all. Guys, I just put in this. It's called tunk, tunk, blah, blah, blah. trunk texture. What did I do? Seven color. Wait, index? Yeah, it's a weird file format. Set this to RGB color. Why is it? like this stop and then we'll just copy this there we go okay <laughs> we got dirt <laughs> okay <laughs> we need to add like lighting now it should look good except for the fact that we don't have normals <laughs> It does not look good. <laughs> that's good enough. That's better than it was before. Like, it has some shadows, so that's pretty much what I was going for. Next, I decided to try to make a chunk manager for larger worlds. I also added multi-threading to it. Time being, I am going to turn this chunk size back down to four. Okay. Oh, no. <laughs> Ooh, that is triffy. Uh, I don't know if I like that very much. We have our chunks generated. That's cool. After this dream, I added infinite worlds that generate around the camera. I also made it so that developers can limit the world size on any axis if they want limited worlds. The chunk manager works about the same as before. It contains a chunk thread that generates a queue of chunks around the player. Then for each chunk it generates, it generates all of the surrounding chunk data and passes it to the chunk renderer that it's generating. It also deletes all chunk renderers and chunk data that is out of range. When the chunk generates its mesh, it loops through all of the blocks, skips the block if it's empty, and then generates all the faces. For each face, it checks to see if the block next to it is empty. This can be from the same chunk or the neighboring chunk. If the block next to it is solid, it skips the face. This way, no faces that aren't visible to the player generate, which improves performance drastically. After making the chunks, I added basic noise using fast noise light for some better world generation. This is very basic noise currently, but it's way better than the randomness we had before. However, the world is still just dirt, so I think it's time to add some more blocks. I started by creating a block struct that contains information about texture coordinates. I then made this block registry class that contains all of the block definitions. Inside of my chunk mesh generation function, I simply get the block from the registry and set the texture coordinates to those found in the block definition. I somehow broke world generation in the process of doing this, which has a very strange but cool looking result. Then I fixed the grass, but somehow not the dirt. This is even stranger. I finally fixed it all though, so now we have grass blocks as well as dirt blocks. However, this terrain generation is pretty boring. To fix this, I decided to play around with 3D noise. This creates overhangs as seen here. After some experimentation, I landed on this. It's not great, but I'm happy with it for now. I then tried adding caves. This is way too much cave, that's not right. At this point, it's just floating islands. There's barely any ground. Finally, some reasonably sized caves. With these changes, the world generation is much more interesting than it was before. The next thing I want to add is the ability to place and break blocks. I created this raycast function that steps through the world and returns the first block it hits, if any. It's pretty simple and about what I had before, but with some optimizations to make sure the same block isn't being checked twice. For breaking blocks, I simply do the raycast and set the block that was hit to air. For placing blocks, I first get the hit block and then calculate the distance between the hit position and the center of the block. I get the block next to the face that the hit position was closest to and set it to the selected block. I also made a pick block function that works the same way as breaking blocks, but instead of setting the hit block, it gets its ID and sets that as a selected block. When a block gets changed in the chunk manager, it runs the calculate mesh function. It then checks if the block changed is on the edge of the chunk, and if it is, it also remeshes the neighboring chunk. With that, we can break and place blocks easily as well as selecting them. I also add a text to the I'm GUI window that shows the selected block. That's all I have for this video. It's a huge improvement over the old scuffed Minecraft so far, though it doesn't have all the same features yet. I didn't want to rush to add all of the old features back because they were horribly coded last time, and this time I want to do it right. I'll have a poll up at some point so you can vote for what I add next. Thank you all again for 10,000 subscribers. If you enjoyed the video, I would appreciate a like and sub. No pressure, of course. Thank you to my channel members, Ulysses Jen, who's been a member for a whole year now. 
and Miyaki, who's been a member for 11 months. Thank you guys so much for your support. If you'd like to support me as well, you can become a YouTube member for early access to videos, or you can join my Patreon for early code access. Thank you all so much for watching. As always, the Project Gate Hub is in the description, as well as links to my Twitch, Discord, and Patreon. I hope you have a good rest of your day, and I'll see you all next time. Goodbye.